Hello and welcome back to my second video tutorial for Blender. In this video I will talk about different footage types from different devices and how to use them in one video. I take this as an opportunity to work on a project which is long overdue. It's a simple travel video from a, from a vacation I think two years ago where I recorded footage with several different devices. As you can see here, it's from my phone, from an iPhone, and video footage from my Canon camera, from my Nikon, then some images, and, and also images from my phone. And uh, the last folder is just some music. It's always good to edit videos with some good music can be a bit difficult at the beginning when you start with like videos from different uh, devices because because they all use different frame rates some of them if, if you were not careful the white balance is not correct or especially the phones they they shoot the videos with an automatic white balance which can sometimes be very annoying but yeah there, there's never a right or wrong on how to do things but this video could give you an idea how you could approach that problem Okay, first things first, the layout. You're wondering how you get there. Normally when you start Blender it looks like this. So one option is to arrange all the windows you need yourself or you just go on file, new and video editing and then it looks like this or sim very similar. I just added another window here so you can see what I'm doing and with my mouse and my keyboard. On the left I have my, my my hard disk drive open. I can just close that so I have a bit more space for my preview window. The first thing I did was to organize all my footage according to the device I used. It's good practice to organize your videos like that since you then know exactly what to do with the video you import and how you need and how you need to treat it because the devices are all different. So first these are all the videos from my um, from my camera. There even here are differences because I was shooting slow motion, high frame rate. See, you can see it here. Actually, it has 120 frames per second. My Canon is pretty much always the same. I I, I just use the normal HD recording setting. The Nikon has also different settings for slow motion or normal video. The next thing. I would do is to check my video settings. Dimensions, I'm using the standard HD video setting. You can go on, on the drop down menu and select what fits best to your video. For me, I just use the standard HD, HD uh, TV setting. Then the next thing, the frame rate. I normally use 24 frames per second and that has a reason my slowest device is my Canon. So my Canon can shoot in the HD resolution but only with 24 frames per second. So I try to base my frame rate on the slowest footage I have. And that is also the default setting of uh, Blender. Another thing would be the output. In the output I would choose my, my work folder. So the output is set to that folder and we, we don't want to have an image file format. For YouTube, I, I would use the FF MPEG video file. Then I choose the encoding. I just like to use the MP4. There are different video codecs in here. I normally use the H264. The output quality I use normally perceptual lossless. And then audio codec I use the AAC. I use that because then this file also works on Mac and iPhones. What's important to, to say is that the frame rate will update according to the first video I place into the sequencer. So for example if I put the Beria footage, it changes to 30 frames per second. So that keep the video and the audio the same length. Because what happens if I go back to 24, then the audio stays the same, but the video got longer because it basically it's using the same amount of frames uh, divided over the 24 frames per second. 
I will sh I, I I will show you later on how to deal with that. You can select the video and audio separately, and if you want to see the the waveform of the of the audio, you can go here into this um, strip panel, click on strip and display waveform. So it, it will show you the actually audio waves for that for that strip. That's very handy, especially when you then work with music. So in order to fix that, that problem that actually the footage now is, is a bit slower than it is in reality. So I just, with Shift A, I introduce an effect strip called Speed Control. Oops, sorry. I need to deselect first everything and then select my audio, uh, my, my video strip. Shift A, effect strip, Speed Control. And with the handlers, either left or right, I can then with uh, G can pull my my footage to the same length as the audio file. You can always see the length of, of any footage uh, in here. Time, the duration uh, is 585. And I can compare that so to see if I pulled it to the right to the right frame. I can check that, and it's also 585. So if I play that now, then it should be the correct speed. So what you can see now is that the video is start to get stuck. This is because it cannot handle the extra calculations you need to do to actually change the speed. So it tries to compensate and it, it like over jumps several frames. I will I will show how to deal with that in a minute, and then maybe I introduce another effect. Then. Let's turn that off. You can always mute anything in here in the panel on the right side. If you don't want to hear the sound for the moment, just go here on that small checkbox mute. Now, if I run this, you can see here the actual frame rates, it's, which is only two frames per second, so it jumps a lot. So how to deal with that? This is one thing a lot of people give up right away because they can't fix it and they don't know how to fix it. You can see here on the right panel, proxy and cache um, section. So what is it about? Okay, I will first delete my effects. The proxy will create a copy of your footage, the footage you're using, in a lower resolution and will save it on your drive and will use it as a temporary footage. You need to check strip and proxy and timecode. And in here you can decide basically the the percentage of resolution from your original file so i use 25 because it's it's just the fastest and then you can also select the quality you can even lower the quality this really depends on on how you how strong your computer is and what what i found find really amazing is that with these settings you, you can really use the crappiest computer and you still have a, have to have a smooth video preview thank you blender developers so, for me, it works fine if this is just uh, 90. It doesn't. It does not uh, change the quality of your final output. It just changes the quality of your preview. And then you press Rebuild Proxy and Timecode, and you will see here in the in, the, in this uh, time bar when this uh, when the calculation is finished. So now. In the preview, nothing has changed. It still uses this, the original file. In order to actually look at the 25% version, you need to open that triangle. Go on view settings, proxy render size, and you go on proxy size 25%. Decide it, and then you can see now it becomes super pixelic, but also super fast. So if I now use any effect strip on top, It will just still run very smooth. If you want to check the the colors and if it's sharp enough, the video, you can always go here and say no proxy, full render. Then it will just jump back to the to the original file. But for now, I use the 25%. So normally, what I do is I just load all the video, all the footage I want to um, use in the video, and then apply the, the 
proxy settings on it and then I start cutting. Uh, if you want to see where where the proxy file is stored because you don't want to keep it later on. If you go here now on video Xperia then it, you can see here it created this folder blender proxy and then it says the basically the 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 25% version of that video. So the next thing I would do, let's delete this first. The next thing I would see which, if, if I want to have like my footage come in, a, in the right order, if you go here into your folder preview, you can uh, switch between different uh, display modes. So you can have vertical list, you can have a horizontal list, you can have thumbnails, which then helps to decide which footage you actually want to use. You can also see the size, it gives you an indication of how long that video might be. But yeah, here, for example, this were all recorded on the 12th of October. So maybe, let's see, on the other, this is 6th of October, 6th, okay, 2 o'clock in the morning, it's basically when we left the house, I think, yeah. You can even change the size, regular, large, here we are on the airport, getting our stuff and then we are already on the beach. So I will not show you how I do the whole video because I think it's super boring but I will just show you. Um, how I would start with it and then in the next tutorial I'll go through some of the other aspects. So the next thing I would do is to check my music. Um, I like to cut to music because it just feels much more natural. I have here a song which I recorded myself. I just extend my time to that, my video to that. Um, yeah, that works fine. Now I want to see the waveform. I'll just make this a bit a bit lower in volume. You can do that here in the strip. And then normally what I do is to mark like the main sections of, 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 of the song. Now with my time marker you can uh, mark, so wherever you are now with the time marker you can press M and it creates a marker at that location. So this is where the song intro stops and the, the first theme starts. So if you go here. And then I will just very quickly find the other important bits. So one, one more thing I want to talk about here in Blender. I really encourage you to learn your keyboard shortcuts. That makes this uh, software incredibly fast. So for video edi editing I mostly use so to start and stop your preview is spacebar. If you want to move anything and now for example that marker was not placed in the right position, I can select it and with G I can move it where, where I want to have it. So now I go back here, oh yeah, it should be here. Yeah. K is cut. If you want to go back, just Ctrl C, and then there is another cut with, which is called a permanent cut, which is Shift K. I will talk about the difference in a minute. Adding anything from effects, text, color, sounds, and stuff, I use Shift A.
so with your keyboard arrows you can also your marker frame by frame or you can move frame by frame with ctrl m you can rename markers as well that's i'm sometimes too lazy for that to be honest and then i would start to just uh, start to import the footage one by one it's like a rough sketch so i would go here let's check proxy it's not very interesting maybe i will not use that As you can see, the video also always jumps to the time marker. So wherever my time marker is, as soon as I import a new file, it will jump here. Another shortcut I use all the time is B, B for box select. With A you can select everything and with AA you deselect everything. With shift you can select several items one by one. It would be good to know so now after you set your markers and you're starting importing your video, your footage, then it's a good idea to not change the frame the frame rate anymore because you would uh, lose all your marks. The marks will stay um, but your audio file would not uh, correspond with your markers anymore. So if I would just show you very quickly how it, how it would be if I now import a file with a different frame rate. So for example here, again I need to first um, build my proxy. So because this was recorded in a much higher frame rate. I sometimes use that as an effect, so I have a really cool slow motion automatically. Don't need to change the speed setting or whatever whatsoever. If I want to use the real speed of the recording, then you could say speed control and you pull your video to the same length of your audio file. The problem is that in this way I cannot cut the video. I can shorten it, I can make it even shorter, but then so if I, if I want this footage moving the right speed and stops here, there are several ways to do that. So either I will move that up and just don't deal with it at all basically, just put another video on top. It's like layers in Photoshop. So what are my other options? My other option would just to mute the video at that spot. That's another option. So I would take my video, say strip on insert keyframe, unmute my video at this position. And, and then at this point I can say In that case I need to do it twice because the speed control is overlaying on top of my video so I need to do this here. Okay. 
what I normally do though is I go back you can always clear any keyframes so that will remove all keyframes what I normally do is I just do it just on a gut feeling what I do is I check my video and see where do I want to what I want to show which part of the footage I want to show and I want, let's say until here and because I want to use it later on there's another shortcut uh, with shift D you can duplicate anything so I put that here and this one and I will now cut with shift K which is a permanent cut and then your video stops here and it doesn't continue and in that way I can then apply my speed control on top of that And that's basically on how I would like go through all of my footage I want to use in the video and trim it and arrange it according to the music. But I will not bore you with the with the complete editing of the video. I'll just speed up the process a bit and let's see you on the other end. Yes, so hey, as you can see, I just very roughly trimmed and cropped and cut my video footage to the um, according to the music and to the position I I can imagine them in, in my video. And sometimes I used the speed effect to sp speed up the footage, and and then I just um, sorted them by the different gears I used. It's not a feature film, so don't judge me. Judge me on that. Uh, I hope you got some idea on how to trim and cut your video. O of course, there are many more aspects to that, but this video is more about the technical aspect of it. In the next video, I will refine that rough sketch and then add white balance correction if if it needs uh, color correction maybe changing brightness and contrast maybe also doing some, some color grading in the video after I will, I will add texts, titles and also effects so thanks for watching if you like it give me a thumbs up if you want subscribe and see you in the next tutorial